How's it going YouTube? I'm back with my car trauma kit that I keep inside my vehicle. I'm going to go through each and then every individual part and show you what I have inside. Just stand by. Alright, so the first thing that we got is my pocket CPR mask. Things I keep in here. I've got some tongue depressors because everybody knows anything about CPR. A lot of times you have to clear someone's throat, and that would really help with keeping someone's tongue out of the way. And there's other uses too, if you can think of any. I got one and two CPR masks. So that way I can, you know, not put my mouth in someone else's mouth and get some nastiness, you know. Nobody wants any of that. Alright, next is my surgical kit, which I'm actually going to take off of this so you can get a better look at it. Alright, so this is my surgical kit. For, like it says right there, it's for minor surgery only, so nothing major, nothing like a kidney transplant or heart surgery. Can't do anything like that. Let me get it open for you. You can take a look inside. I've added quite a few things myself to it. You've got your average forceps, scissors, scalpel, you got a probe, long tweezers, short tweezers. I've added some super glue in there because I don't know what you guys are using with my cuts. I just super glue them shut. So it's got a pupil gauge light. And then over here in this little pocket, you got hand uh, sanitizing wipes, alcohol swabs. These little packs of hand sanitizer, which I think are awesome. Um, some iodine prep pads, so also where the sutures are, and the scalpel blades. And some antibiotic ointment. What else is in here? Some uh, butterfly closures. Here are your scalpel blades. What I love most about this thing is it just all rolls up into a nice, neat little size pouch. And it has a molly strapping on the back so I can strap it to my, any bag that I need to, or in this case, my trauma kit. I think that's really useful. Alright, so that's the front part of the pouch. Let's move over to the uh, left side. Alright, now on this side, we've got the glove dispenser. And of course, anybody with a battle box subscription also got this bag. That's where I got it from. A lot of stuff in this came from the battle box subscription. Not everything. So far, it's in the bag and this pouch that you've seen so far that came in it. It has the gloves in here. And this is where you pull the gloves out. I don't know how many pairs of gloves I have in here. Probably around 10, 12, somewhere around there. And when you're ready, just pull the gloves out from this little spot here, and you can utilize them. It's a lot easier than trying to dig through your bag to find them. And it's just really handy. I actually really like that, how it's, you just put this little pouch on and you have easy access to all your gloves. Alright, and next, we're going to go around to the back side where you see the, you know, little orange-handled scissors poking out right there. Let me take you out there real quick. Alright, so this is my tourniquet and scissor pouch. T key for tourniquet. So you open it up. I do actually have a tourniquet in here. Alright. The pouch itself came in the battle box description. The tourniquet did not. I already previously had that. And I got two pairs of trauma shears. Got a small pair. And then I've got a large pair that also came in the battle box description. And things are really sharp and they work amazing. They cut through clothes, and you cut through a lot heavier fabrics and like denim and other things like that. Alright, and let's move over to the pouch right there. Forgot about that one. Alright, so this pouch right here, which I have Molly strapped to this part, which is actually part of the bag, this is not. I added this. 
I have this strapped to it. And on it, I have a small pocket knife, which is a little Gerber. Nice sharp little knife, just for utility purposes. And have it right there where it's easily accessible. And if I need to grab it, I don't need to search around for it. I know exactly where it is. Alright, and then going on to the inside. This is where I have some Q-tips. These are for application purposes of ointments or helping clean up certain areas that are small. Got those. Came in these nifty little bags of first aid kit that I bought. Got some small packets of antacid. Some non-aspirin. Some regular aspirin. Acetaminophen, which is the same thing as a non-aspirin. I just keep them separate because if I'm not the one going into the kit, I tell someone to get the acetaminophen, they'd probably understand better if I said get the non-aspirin because it's more basically uh, you know, worded. Not aspirin is a lot easier to remember than acetaminophen. This thing, which is, I'm not even going to try to pronounce because I know I'm going to screw it up, but basically it's an allergy pill. Some ibuprofen. And I've got more ibuprofen. A little bit of a Zyrtec allergy pills and some anti-diarrhea pills and then you can see in there I got about eight extra pairs of gloves because when it comes down to something happening where a lot of people hurt you can never have too many gloves alright and so now we're gonna move up to the pocket right above it. Alright, and so in this pocket, I keep something, the stuff where it would be easily accessible that I would really need quick. A couple extra rolls of tape next to the one that's already on here, right up at the top, next to my blood type, which is A positive. I'm gonna put those down here, tape out the way. And you go into this, where I've got two things this quick clot clotting sponges. Got two of those in there. I've got these, which are things of eye wash. So if you get something in your eyes or something spills in your eyes, it's not supposed to be there. This is what you use to flush it out. And in here I've got a military bandage. I don't remember where I got this one, but it's just like your average trauma bandage. Put all the tape back in there. But I just want to have extra tape because you'll see why. This tape will be very useful for, to use with all the other pieces of first aid equipment that's inside of this bag. Alright, now we're just going to flip on over to the other side. Alright, in this side pocket, I've got quite a few of these trauma bandages. Got this one. And got another one. This is a military one. I want to try to get that. Zoom in. Next, I got another large compression bandages. Bandage, not bandages. And lastly, I've got this North American Rescue Trauma Dressing. It's it came in the uh, Battle Box subscription, so that's where this came. One, this one came from, and I like it. Well, if I stop dropping it, I like it because it has the instructions also on the back. So if you're struggling, you can just look at this and slap it on wherever you need to slap it on to. So based on these small side pockets, I've got 
large trauma dressings for stopping large amounts of bleeding. Now we're going to move into this pouch right here. Oh, this going to be odd to get to on the table. Alright, inside of here, I've got the wraps, like the ace bandage wraps. Thing of that nature. The elastic bandages for sprains and breaks. Got some triangular bandages. Then over here, I actually got one thing of a uh, insect repellent, and then a bunch of these little afterbite sting relief. I like these, these are really useful to have in there. Because, yes, this is a car trauma kit, but it can also be a basic car first aid. So, if I'm out and someone gets bit by a mosquito or stung by a bee and they're crying about it and want some relief, I can give them one of those. And another thing that I have, is, which is really cool, these were given to me. Oh, I lost a piece of it. There we go. Just kicking my ass there for a second. Alright, I was given these, which are insect sting and bite relief capsules. Let you read that real quick. So basically, you take it. Pull this out, swap this in here, and squeeze really hard there, and then you uh, apply it to the bite or the sting to help with the relief. Alright, then over here, another thing of super glue. Love super glue. Alright, and also next to it, I've got a whistle. Why? Because say something happens and you have to leave somebody somewhere and you want them you want to be able to find them again. Easy way to do it is have that whistle, just give it to them, or you can have it to rally people around you. It's just a useful little thing to have in there. Alright. And then here I've got a couple iPads. No, this is for uh, eye injuries, obviously. Got a couple of those in there. And then right alongside the iPads, we've got a bunch of these small square gauze pads for the same usage or other usage. You can put these over eyes also or just for a small cut that's bleeding a lot. You can easily put a piece of gauze over there. It's better than putting a bandage to put a piece of gauze over it. So going in here, this is my ouchie boo boo and burn center. I got your burn dressing. I like playing with this, it's really squishy. <laughs> but it's a hydrogel and you just put it over the burn and attach it with the first aid tape or ace bandage. And then right here I've got bandages, different size bandages for you know small finger cuts and whatnot. I like it being in this kit, top kit. So if, again, if I'm in my car and someone just gets a small cut, again easily accessible. Just open up this top pouch, grab them a bandage, good to go. A couple of the super small ones are up here, and the slightly larger ones are down there, along with a piece of moleskin for blisters. Antibiotic cream, ointment, whatever you want to call it. Again, with the ouchie boo boo kit because people get small cuts. Even small cuts can become infected, so it's always good to have them right where you can get to it. Burn cream for burns, obviously. 
Got quite a few of those. Actually got some behind here too. A lot of these. Then right down here, I've got my alcohol swabs and my hand cleaning swabs. And a couple more of these little instant hand sanitizer packets. These are really cool. I've got about four of those in there. Then I got the uh, alcohol swabs and the uh, quick clean hand sanitizing hand wipes. That's it for this pouch. Load everything back up in there. Last time we get into the main part of the pouch. The main pouch, we're going to go in through the back, make it a little bit easier to get into, and the camera will see it. Alright, so right up here, I've got a couple more of those small gauze pads. And easily accessible for the small cuts. So this pouch isn't really meant to be open for small cuts. This is meant to be open when shit hits the fan and you got people bleeding out everywhere. Just like it was the active shooter scenario that this bag came in. Let's go ahead and get into the deep part of the bottom of the pouch. Alright, so first thing you'll see here is a N95 face mask just for if there's particles in the air or chemicals or something you just want to keep yourself distanced from any sickness that might be around you it's good to have that I got one of those in there I might have to add another one eventually right here you got some waterproof tape a good little bit of that left on there and you can already see this, but I've got two of these instant cold packs for injuries you need to apply ice to or keep cool to keep the swelling down. That's what those are for. Alright, then next right here, got these all out. I got quite a few extra pairs of gloves. Again, you can never, never have too many pairs of gloves. I have a lot in there, so I don't know. Better to have too many than not enough. And then right here, let me zoom it out so you can see this. I've got a nice size stack of different size gauze pads. Just again, if there's a shooter situation or if there's a large accident where lots of people are hurt. You're going to want to use gauze instead of normal bandages because normal bandages aren't going to do anything for heavy bleeding. Going in right here. Got a couple more of the uh, very large sized gauze pads. Alright, then I got a small bottle of hydrogen peroxide for a quick spray on something for a apply a bandage or a gauze. Let's see, also got some uh, wet wipes just for cleaning up afterwards or during. Then going into this out right here. This is my triage area as I call it. So let's go ahead and Go inside of here. I got my marker. You'll see what that's for. Right here. Oh, the, and this is all stuff that came in the uh, battle box kit, also. These are triage lights. Which there are three of them. These are for low light areas where you can put the different colors on people and slap this on because it's, it's uh, got adhesive on one side. So that way when the paramedics are coming through and they can just see who needs to be seen first if you're there and you're marking everyone. And of course it tells you, you know, red is, you know, they need to be seen immediately or they will die. Yellow is, they're hurt pretty bad but they'll, they can wait for a little bit. 
Green is they're going to be fine. Blue is dead. And some places do different colors, which I'll show you in a second. Because they do diff different colors for different things. Just like this one. I think this one uh, it uses black for dead. These also came in the subscription. Yeah, like I said, uses the uh, black for dead. But these are wristbands, just like you get at a fair or an event. Put it around the wrist, easily seen. You mark somebody and you move on to whoever is next. Alright, then right here, along with another thing of tape, are these awesome casualty care cards. Alright, and these are awesome to have in there because you can just tape this on to somebody after you uh, use a marker and mark on what's wrong with them. So the next person coming around can see. There's another thing to tape for it. I have more than enough tape in this bag if you can't tell. Alright, so that's everything in the triage part of the bag. And over on this side there's another pouch. I've got two emergency blankets in there, and also another thing that came in the subscription box, which are these halo seals for sucking chest wounds. So someone shot and hits their lung to stop, you know, the air from sucking in and blowing out, and then basically suffocating to death. You slap them on the wound on the front and back if need be, and it seals it up. Really cool that they added that to it. Believe that is it for the pouch. Let me go ahead and uh, load everything back up in here. Alright, and then to give a little more overview of the bag itself, let me uh, do some maneuvering in here. So it's got the two, the, these two side pockets are built onto it. They didn't come with it. It's got molly strapping on the sides of here, on the front of here, and then on this pocket too. So I've added this, added the CPR mask, surgical kit. This came with a subscription box. I like the carrying handle right here. It's a perfect place to grab it. These detach so you can get into the actual pocket itself. It's got the carrying strap, which is padded really well right here. Like it, so that way it doesn't dig in your neck. It's it's really comfortable. I like it. And flip around to the back. This is made with buckles, which I've got tucked away because I don't use them. But you can wear it almost like a fanny pack, or if you want to hook it around your waist and wear it as a butt pack or day pack, you can. But of course, on these little sides, you got more molly webbing. So it's really, really handy little thing. I really like this box that they sent. Hopefully, they keep up the good work with stuff like this, because this one was absolutely amazing. Alright, that is it for now. I appreciate you guys sticking around to watch my video of my vehicle trauma kit. Hopefully you all have a great day, and I'll see you next time.